Each season, Guys Telling Stories seeks out fascinating people with a good story to tell. I'm Rich Douglas, and this man beside me is my co-host, Bill Easton. We're a couple guys who love a good story. So join us on our quest to find fascinating people with a good story to tell. This is Guys Telling Stories. It's some energy there, Rich. <laughs> Welcome to Guys Telling Stories. Wow. Yeah, I'm excited about our guest uh, I, today, I Bill. I can tell already. Yeah, we have our first travel expert, world-renowned authority on inexpensive travel, Johnny Jett. It's a cool last name. Oh, I know. What are, uh, if anybody could pick their own name, man, I would pick something like what that. James Jett, football player. Yeah, any name that ends in Jett. He's a receiver, like faster than everybody. His yep. name's Jett. Of course it is. That's why he's faster, right? Mm. Yeah. A lot of pressure as a kid, though. Well, Bill, Johnny Jett's an expert on travel, and this season we were looking to find some people who could help us travel the world and do it affordably. Just some tips, right? You know, yeah. helping out, affordable travel. Everyone likes to travel. Most people like to travel. I shouldn't say everyone. Well, especially around the holidays, everyone's traveling home or traveling. That's when people don't like to travel. Yeah, well, yes. it's tough. It's tough. But the past few weeks, I'm sure people have been headed back to where they grew up or to go see uh, friends or maybe even taking a trip. So I know me personally, I just booked a trip to Chicago. Nice. Yeah. It's not for a couple of months, but it's going to be our first trip with the baby. Oh, cool. kind of like a trial run. Yeah. <laughs> try, trial runs when you just get on the plane and sit there an hour and get off. Well, that's you're exactly. You're actually flying. That's like, exactly you're what You're not is. trying anything. You're doing it. Well, it's a direct flight from okay. Buffalo to Chicago and... Uh, <laughs> you know, an hour or two with the baby and uh, uh-huh. in a week and away, and we'll see how that goes. Did you use your uh, companion pass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll share some tips with the entire trip was free. We had a points from our Southwest card. We used our companion pass, and I signed up for the Marriott Rewards card when I was traveling earlier in the year, and we're using those points for the hotel stay. That's awesome. Yep. So you got Marriott Rewards points, and you got the companion pass points through Southwest. Now, signing up for these cards mm-hmm. is always risky. If you, uh, you know, I don't want everyone out there to, to listen to this today and all of a sudden have nine credit cards and... well. And, you, and you gotta you year. gotta put your everyday spending on it, but pay it off each month. That's right. You know. Now, do you have any trips planned coming up? Uh, well, you know, we're going on a cruise. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Am I going too? Yeah, I think you are. Yeah, I think. I am. Yeah, we do that. We cruise together once in a while, us and the wives, and and uh, we're doing that. Um, you know, that my my cruise uh, could have been free, which is which is I guess my my credit card uh, story is. Okay. 2011 got a my friend uh, and one of the best drummers in Buffalo. His name is Eddie Tabone. Suggested that I get a Royal Caribbean credit card. Shout out to Eddie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I did. I was just like, well, you know, why not? Why not? At that time, I didn't. I didn't really get it and understand things. But just over the course of six years and putting on um, some some business expenses that I know are always going to get paid off. Um, all of a sudden, it's. I went to look at it and it's just like we can go seven day Caribbean cruise, both of us free. Completely free. That's incredible. And uh we're a little bit away from you know, there's there's some other there's some other trips. There's a Mediterranean one, uh we're about halfway there. And then there's an Alaskan one and we'll we'll have that soon. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, I can't wait to go to Alaska. <laughs> Uh, seriously, I'll go with you. Okay. If I'm invited. Uh, you're invited. <laughs> well, basically, we're sharing our stories about travel with you because uh, the listeners out there, we are not spending thousands and thousands of dollars to go no. on these trips. We're just using these credit card sign up bonuses, mm-hmm. credit card points, booking the trips with the points, and it's essentially free. And, well, yeah, it's free. We have to, it's only free because you, you can only put on there what you can pay off. Yep. And the reason it, it's free is because other people who are paying. All the credit card interests are basically paying for us to go. <laughs> is that how it works? That's, how, that's totally how it works. Well, <laughs> you know, without getting too much in the weeds, it's traveling inexpensively is like basically like talking another language. And before I knew that any of this existed, I probably wouldn't even understand how to listen to that language, let alone speak mm-hmm. it like we are. And our guest today, Johnny Jett, he's he's fluent in the language. That's right. He is somebody who is actually an authority on inexpensive travel. So for 20 years now, he's been known for traveling to over 20 countries a year and helping others to travel all around the world inexpensively by providing information on his website and his newsletters. And that's at johnnyjett.com. 
I'm pretty excited because he's the first, one of the first, maybe the first to try anything like this. Like back before, now I don't say before internet, but pretty close. Yeah, exactly. You know, he was one of the first ones around and he's still doing it today. And so we're hoping to hear how he got involved in this traveling game and maybe learn a thing or two about how we can uh, travel, you know, the world ourselves. Yeah, I could probably be better at it. All right. Well, let's talk to, uh, let's talk to Johnny Jet. Sounds good. All right, Johnny, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. <laughs> He's excited. Oh, absolutely. He's excited as we are. Yeah. All right. You know, I got to ask, being a, a travel expert and been to, I don't even know how many countries, we'll have to ask that later. Where Where were we uh, talking to you from today? I'm in Clearwater, Florida, where it's about 80 degrees. Ugh. Oh, we're jealous. It's starting to become winter here in uh, in New York. I know. I grew up in Connecticut, so I know what it's like, and I do not miss it this time of year. That's why he's there. <laughs> but I live in Los Angeles, by the way. Oh, yeah, another cold place. Well, you know, speaking of Los <laughs> Angeles, I saw I was on um, I was on your social media. Maybe we could tell people where to find you while they're listening to this. Where's the best place to go? Yeah, so my website's johnnyjet.com, J-O-H-N-N-Y-J-E-T.com. Uh, only one T. I'm not related to Joan. And then all my social media handles are Johnny Jet. Um, again, J O H N N Y J E T. Sounds good. So um, recently, there was a little uh, Emmy Emmy thing going on. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. So I was um, very fortunate to be invited to the Emmys by Chase Sapphire Preferred Card. So you know, a lot of my business is you know, telling people which cards, to, credit cards to get to help, you know, offset their travels as long as you can pay your credit card bills off in full. If you can't pay your credit card bills off in full, do not ever get a rewards travel card Yeah, because that makes, it's just going to cost you more money in the long run. Makes a lot can, of sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great way. A lot of them have really good perks. And one of the perks with a Chase Sapphire Preferred is that they can get you into the Emmys and they have certain shows that they work with and all credit card premium credit card companies like this, you know, they, they try and one up each other by, you know, offering exclusive access to some of their members. And, uh, so their members could bid on it. I, they invited me, so I did not have to bid full disclosure, but, um, it was really cool to go backstage, um, to the green room, walk the red carpet, meet some of the celebrities and, you know, watch the show. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw a yeah. picture of you in like your finest tux. And who were you with? They looked like uh, James Corden from Late yes. Late Show. Yep, they brought James Corden into. Uh, we, they had a little private party underneath underneath the audience for, before the show, and they brought him in to say hello to everybody and and take selfies and things like that. And I've been to his show before. He's a real nice guy, and that guy is a, is a. I thought I was a, the selfie master. He is, man. He just come. <laughs> by and take everyone's selfie like in, in a minute. Good a for him. A little selfie attack, selfie bombs. <laughs> yeah, he's good. Rich, I have that card, you know. Oh, you do? I do, I do. That tasting that we did in Vegas a while back, mm -hmm. me and Don, that was uh, that was uh, an upgrade that we used. Uh, One of their VIP for. awards? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. certain credit cards, they do, you know, they do wonders. And, um, uh, you know, I'm going to Hawaii for... For Christmas, using my points. Oh, another, another Star, cool Star, place. Star Wars American Express, yeah. <laughs> I, I try and stay away from the cold, as you can tell. <laughs> Well, it's, it was really cool to see you there, but we like to kind of bring it back to your roots a little bit. I know you mentioned before growing up in Connecticut, and, uh, and now you're living on the uh, on the West Coast. But, you know, if you take us back before you started to travel, uh, what was life like uh, before you became Johnny Jet? Yeah, you know what? You know, I was always fascinated with travel, but I come from a fairly large family. I have three siblings, and it, back then it was really expensive to fly, and so we mostly just drove places. Once in a great, you know, once every four years or five years, we would fly to Florida, and it just blew me away that you go from freezing cold Connecticut to hot and sunny Florida in two hours, and it still blows me away today that you can get off the ground. These planes can get off the ground and take us you know, all these different places. I mean, I went to Hawaii this week for dinner. <laughs> My grandparents knew I did that or great grandparents. I mean, they wouldn't be able to conceive it because, you know, a hundred years ago, people to go across the country would take them um, three months. So, so it sounds like this travel bug kind of caught you once you were 17. Early, 
18. Yeah. Kind of early, but then, but then I became afraid to fly. And that's a whole other story. I became not only afraid to fly, but I was afraid to leave the house. I was diagnosed with asthma, and we never traveled internationally. But I talked my mom into going on this incredible trip to Australia. Um, my sisters were living there at the time. It's another long story. And Crocodile Dundee just came out, and I was fascinated with Australia. Uh-huh. And after after months of talking my mom into it, she said, "All right, let's go for your spring break." And it was going. I was going to New York, San Francisco, Hawaii, Sydney, Perth, uh, Fiji, and then L.A. and back home in two weeks. And it was like a dream trip. And before we went, my mom took me to the doctor, and the asthma doctor was like, "You're going to Australia?" <laughs> She's like, "You know, that's a that's a 27 hour flight. You might have a difficult time breathing." <laughs> oh, I'm like, what are you talking about breathing? She's like, you know, planes are pressurized. Anyway, she put the fear of God in me. And the next day we go to the airport and I have a full on anxiety attack. Oh. And I, I tell my mom, I can't go. And she's like, you're joking. And I'm like, I'm not. And when she realized I wasn't joking and I was like, I had tears in my eyes. She actually started crying because she had no idea what was wrong with me. She spent all this money and she wasn't going to see her, her daughter's. And uh, then my dad started crying because he was dropping us off at the airport. He thought he had the house to himself for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a mess. Uh-huh. And then in the next three years, my my parents you know, took me to all kinds of shrinks and doctors, and none of them could really figure it out and it, except one uh, homeopathic Indian doctor. It was like, the problem is you're on too much medication and that's what's giving you the anxiety. And, uh, he figured it out. And then I got over my, my fear of flying and not only fear of flying, but leaving the house. And then I went out to school to California, which was always my dream to live in California. And that just changed my life around going out there. Awesome. And then I don't know if you still want to hear this story, but when I when, was in California, I started uh, dating a girl whose parents lived around the world. Her dad was a banker and she invited me to Singapore the first year. And I was like, you know, I, I, I gave her some reason why I couldn't go. But the real reason was I was afraid. I was afraid if I'd be able to breathe on the long flight. Be able to, I was afraid if I'd be able to breathe in Singapore. And uh, so I said no. But the next year she invited me to Hong Kong and I was like, I got to do it. And so – I said yes, but she only flew business class, and I never knew what it was like on the other side of that curve. <laughs> so, uh, but I, you could bet I wasn't going to sit in the back of the bus while she's up front sipping champagne. Right, right. Uh. So that was my first real tra- travel challenge where I found um, a cheap business class ticket. And I, I got to tell you, if you want to have your first out of coach experience, you want to do it on a Trans Pacific flight because, man. It was long and it's amazing and it was like I love this and I fell in love with travel, fell in love with Hong Kong. That's great. And when I got when I got home, I had so many freaking flyer miles from that one ticket. It was like this is a racket. So I just really started studying miles and points and learning all different tips and tricks and sharing them with my friends and family. Well, you kind of answered, I believe, our uh, next question I was going to ask, which was about your uh, your website and your newsletter and how it got started. But it sounds like uh, that's how it yeah, got started. Well, well, I- when I when I came back, actually the following year, we went to Australia together. And then when I came back, I took a, my first job out of college, which was working actually at a university, uh, recruiting students for their admissions office. And usually, when you're working for an admissions office, you're just driving around locally. But my luck, everyone quit, and all of a sudden, I got all these territories. I was going to Hawaii three times a year. I had 26 states. Wow, And I really started learning and mastering travel because, again, once you go up front, it's tough to go in the back. And uh, they hired all my friends to work in the office, and I just started sharing my tips and saying, listen, I know we're on a tight budget, but if you use this website – and this is 1995 when email and and websites were brand new. Netscape. I was, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, if you use, if you use this website, uh, it will save you money, and, we can, you, can, and you can you know stay at a really nice hotel and – so they just started sharing it with their friends, and uh, next thing I know, it took off, and I cr- had a student worker create me a really basic website, and three months later, USA Today wrote about it, and once they wrote about it, it just took off. My friends would call me up and say, turn on the TV right now. Your website of the day on CNBC's Power Lunch, and I'm like, you're joking. That's great. And it just grew. It just grew from there. Now, was that moment where your website was featured nationally that no turning back moment for you was that hey i'm quitting my day job was it did it happen all all of a sudden or was there a little bit um, more to it yeah after that happened i was like i i, was, I mean once they featured it 
and all these other newspapers started writing about it and I started getting traffic. And one of my friends was like, you know what? You can start making some money. I'm like, really? And they told me about affiliates where, you know, the websites I was already talking about and linking, they pay you a referral fee. It doesn't cost anything for the, for the reader. And I remember I got my first check and he's like, oh my God, you got to frame this. This is, this shows that you make money. And I was like, the check, it actually costs them more for the stamp than it did for the <laughs> check. But, you know, but back then I needed the money. I cashed a check. I didn't even bother framing it. It was 29 cents. Oh my goodness. And so was there a time where you were living in both worlds, still doing co- oh, yeah. college admissions, but then, oh, yeah. you know, running sure. this website on the side? Yeah, I didn't quit the, I didn't quit my, uh, I quit my job at the office as a co- recruiter in 2000. So, uh, you know, like four years, maybe four, 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 four or five years. And, and then I started going full time, but it took me a long time to make money. You really have to work hard, and I spent a lot of hours. I'd go to conferences and network and and stuff like that. You know, we we like to get into a little bit of that struggle because there's lots of folks out there that we talk to that are trying to start their own website or, like Bill, start his new business. And there's hurdles, there's competitors, there's things that sort of block you along the way. So, was there anything when you were starting to grow that business that sort of hindered that growth? Well. I mean, back then I, I was fortunate because there wasn't a lot of competition out there. No one, you know, there wasn't many websites at all. And I remember I used to go to, on press trips and they're like, you write for a website, not a magazine or a newspaper. What is that? Mm-hmm. And, but, you know, the, you know, my best advice for people just starting out now is that it's almost easier because you now have all these outlets and followers on social media so if as long as you publish good information, you know, you will, you will get the followers. It will take time, but you need to, you know, you need to treat it as a full-time job and you need to work hard and you need to go to conferences and network. That makes sense. Getting into uh, a little bit of kind of a theme for our season here, uh, family and, you know, traveling with kids. Um, I know that on some of the social media, it looks like you had a, uh, pretty much the the best baby moon I've ever seen and my my wife and I <laughs> my wife and I just finished up our last little mini baby moon where we went to Nashville. Nice. It was great. Awesome. These were all her ideas too. We we went not only to Nashville but we finally went to Denver and saw Cape Cod over the summer. You know, awesome. you know, asking about the family portion of things, did did getting married sort of influence your your travel plans at all? Oh yeah, I, you know, I never thought I was going to get married. And when I f- met my wife, I met her. Actually, I actually met her on a press trip. I told her from the beginning, I was like, "I'm not getting married. I'm going to be a bachelor. I travel for a living." And um, but she was amazing, and I realized that she was the best woman in the world, and that I would be a fool if I let her go. And uh, so, and fortunately, she was in the same line of business as me, but she worked for a magazine, and I got her to quit her job and and do it you know, work from home and, and be on our own. And then, you know, we went to at least 65 countries together as a couple. And then once we had a baby last year, you know, we didn't travel for the first eight months. Actually, you didn't leave the state of California for about eight months and the baby just did a couple of road trips. But now that once he hit eight months, he's now been flying. He's been flying so much that I have, I create a little, I had a log book for him. I still have it. Every time we get on the plane, the pilot, signs it and the pilot the other day is like man he flies more than i do <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah he's been traveling he's here with me now in florida that's why i'm, I'm kind of being a little bit quiet while i'm on the patio of the hotel <laughs> and and we were actually in nashville three days ago uh i was i was at a conference and and, and you know it's great great city and um yeah now jack has just been he's been traveling around and he he's been good he loves it so my advice once you have the baby is, you know, don't travel during flu season. That was what our doctor said. So we waited till May and then we started traveling and just took it easy and made sure that the pressure didn't bother his ears. And, uh, he's been great. I, knock on wood. Let's hope he continues. Now, baby moon is not the trip you take like a honeymoon right after you get married. It is the trip you take before you have the baby. Right. For those of you out there that are listening, <laughs> like I did the first time I heard baby moon and had to look it up, 
It's not you don't do this right afterwards. You do this before. It was new. It was a new word for me. I got to be honest with you. About <laughs> was it? it? Okay. Un- yeah. un- but my wife knew all about it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Actually, I, I kind of went off topic on that one. Uh, for our baby moon, we were fortunate because uh, you know I'm in the travel business. And when they found out we were having a baby, that both of us were in the travel business, invitations just started rolling in. I mean, we got invited to go around the world on, on one alliance, one of the alliances, but. My wife's like, that's not going to happen. So I was like, all right. <laughs> so uh, we, we, our, 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 our big was we ended up going to Hawaii uh, to the Four Seasons in Lanai and uh, in Oahu. And we also went to the Post Ranch Inn in California, which both were amazing. Really amazing. Yeah, our our Nashville trip was kind of the end of a few different mini moons, but we got there and basically, I guess the CMA awards were happening right around the same time, so we were on the lookout yeah. for any of the stars and I got to be honest with you, I'm not really familiar with you know, country music as much as my wife is, but so I thought everybody was a star, you know, if they were, <laughs> if they, they were dressed up or in one of those cowboy hats. And, uh, you know, we walked around to all the different neighborhoods and, you know, took, you know, Ubers here and there. And we really, really enjoyed ourselves. And, you know, it's, it was pr- a pretty special trip because the purpose was to, you know, celebrate this baby that's on its way in February for us. And we even posted a picture of ourselves wearing cowboy hats and we found a little blue one for like five bucks at, you know, like a I store. And I posted that picture and oh, I, we've <laughs> never, you know, on our personal uh, social media, we've n- I've never gotten as many likes from like friends and family. It's some Facebook knows something. They, they, they showed it to everybody and everyone just said, congratulations. You know, I hope you enjoyed your trip. And, uh, and well, yeah. everyone loves when people have a baby. So, I mean, it's just great news. Uh, you know, so congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. It's the best, it's best, 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 will be the best moment of your life. And it's probably going to be good for our podcast, Rich. That's <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You might as well milk it. <laughs> Quick break to talk about podcasterstory.com. In the spirit of giving, you can show your appreciation by helping someone you love record the story of their life with podcastyourstory.com. Imagine mom or dad telling the world what Christmas was like when they were growing up. And wouldn't it be great to ring in the new year by listening to someone you love tell the story of their life? Well, the experts at podcastyourstory.com have the perfect gift. It's an audio interview for your loved ones to tell their story. And the final product is a polished podcast recording that can be listened to by family, friends, or the entire world. And there's a special offer for our listeners, 20% off your first recording by mentioning promo code GTS. That's right. Give the perfect gift of helping someone you love tell their story and get 20% off with podcasterstory.com simply by mentioning promo code GTS. And now back to our interview with Johnny Jett. We are excited uh, about traveling with the kids. I know you mentioned, you said avoid cold and flu season. Is there any other advice you'd give to, uh, you know, new parents? Oh, yeah. I mean, you want to buy a a seat next to you. Although the child can fly for free the first two years, you might as well, you might as well buy a seat because you'll get more, more room between the two of you. You can put them in the middle seat if, but but it's safest for the baby to be in a car seat on, you know, during the flight, although our baby does not like to sit in the car seat. Uh, but and the car seat has to be in the window seat. So always book the baby in the window. And, uh, you know, take advantage of getting on the board on the, on the plane early. And there's a couple of, there's some, you know, there's some cool companies out there. There's a company out there called Baby Years, which will actually deliver stuff to your hotel room so you don't have to bring everything with you. That's cool. You know, so they'll, they'll, they'll rent you like a um, – you know, a high chair for $5 a day or something. We did that on a weekend trip. We went to Seattle because normally when we travel, we now check bags. We used to never check bags. And now we have like two huge bags that we check. (laughs) Half of them are diapers and baby food. Um, and yeah, just try and adjust to the local time wherever you're going. Johnny, what about car seats? If you say you're going somewhere and renting a car, what do you suggest? So we have an amazing car seat. It's called the Duna, D-O-O-N-A, and it's a stroller car seat. It's not cheap. It's like four fifty, I think. And you, and full disclosure, they sent it to us. Unfortunately, because we're in this line of business, every company sent us strollers 
and car seats and we're and we've been checking them all out and this one though you know you go through the airport you just press a button and it will fold into the car seat and it's faa you got to make sure it's faa and then when we get into cars you could just easily put it uh, the seat belts around it and uh, it really helps traveling because now we cruise through the airports awesome good to know you know, I think I, I'm thinking in my head, uh, circling back to uh, something you mentioned before. Did you say you went to Hawaii for, for I, lunch? I wrote that down. I was yeah. gonna, if, it, if it came back around, I was going to say something. I went for dinner. Oh, oh. okay. Which, how, so that was on Tuesday. <laughs> that last Tuesday. Oh, me too. I, uh, Where were you? <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, United Airlines had their last 747 flight. And that was my first real that was my first international trip when I went to Hong Kong. I flew United on their 747. And when they invited me to go, you know, I knew I had to go from LA to San Francisco to Hawaii and I had to be in Nashville the next day. So I just flew to Hawaii, went down to Waikiki and checked into a hotel for three hours and then checked out to went for a swim, bought some presents for my wife and child and uh, back to the airport and flew back to LA and then picked my wife and uh, set up at the airport and we flew to Nashville. I'm pretty sure it was on so, the news, that flight. <laughs> oh, that like, yeah, that was on the that, Yeah. They, they, did, they did a good job with this. And now, because Delta Airlines is the only airline, U.S. airline left with a 747 and they're retiring it next month. But they're not going to do a, as big of a deal as United did. Are you sure? Because it, it did get a lot of news coverage. <laughs> yeah, maybe they, they better. Uh, <laughs> they should. I mean, yeah. they just released what they're going to do tomorrow. They just released yesterday, actually. They're going to fly. The last commercial flight will be Seoul to uh, Detroit. Okay. Do you, so you, hopefully, if they invite me, I might go. I think it's December 17th. Cool. Yeah, hopefully they, they do. Cause... Maybe they'll invite us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you free that day? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, he's been, his calendar is full. Yeah. Well, you know, sort of winding this thing down a little bit, Johnny, we always like to look ahead. And I know you've gone from living in Connecticut to living on the West Coast to traveling to basically, I mean, how many countries have you hit? Uh, you know, I think I've been to close to 100. That's, I, that's, that's a lot. I know 65 with my wife, so I, I, I did a lot of travel before I met her. You know, I, I go to a lot of the same places, though. So I go to, you know, Italy or London or France, England or France or Australia or Hong Kong or Japan, you know, often. Is Belize? Or Canada. Belize, I've been to Belize. Yeah. Belize a country. Better, it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. You better so, Belize it. I've been to, I've been to four. Yeah, <laughs> are you trying to count in your head? I think we both went to Belize. Oh There's, goodness! Belize is, Belize is a good is an easy country for Americans to go to first because they speak English. Um, it's relatively safe, except the capital is not too safe there. Um, and the food's good. You, you better believe it. I like that. I like that. You got to use that one, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, what, you know what I was getting to before was looking ahead a year or two. What do you see for yourself, for the family, for 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 the website? You know, that's a good question. We're always trying to um, expand. You know, hopefully I'll get some more TV. I used to have a show on the Travel Channel. I had a one-off in 2012. Hopefully I can get something going like that again because that helps with speaking gigs and, and uh, you know, that, pay, that helps pay the bills. So, yeah, and just tr- trying to show people how, how – how easy it can be or what, what it's like or travel tips when you're traveling with a family because it's a completely different ball game. And hopefully we can inspire people, families like yourself to get out and see the world. Cause I, as corny as it sounds, uh, the more people travel and go to other countries, the less prejudices there will be in the world. Yeah, agreed. I feel like we're really, my family and, and Bill, he's just hopped on board with this travel well, he's probably had it longer than I have, but I feel like we're getting to know more parts of the country, and now I want to sort of expand it internationally. So I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. I think that that's a really cool message for you guys, and um, and and just to give you a little inspiration, we're new to this game. You know, we just kind of are figuring out, you know, how to get the frequent flyer miles, or you know, when to book and when not to book, and. You know, is there any advice you'd give to kind of newbies like us to kind of keep yeah. our momentum going? Besides, you know, sure. checking out your shows and website. Yeah, well, <laughs> Does that work? Well, sign up, sign up to my free newsletter. It's johnnyjet.com in the upper hand, right hand. So you get my newsletter and I talk about a lot of this stuff. 
Um, also sign up to other bloggers' newsletters and start learning their tips and tricks. And there's always, you know, you can always find a good deal. And when you find it, you know, jump on it and and it, it will save you money. And then once you start, you know, traveling, you know, internationally, I always tell people trying to go to one new country a year. And by, so that by the time you're 50, you've been to 50 countries. I got a lot of work and, to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you, you know, some of the countries you can go on a cruise in in Europe, and you can hit five. I've, I've, I think I've done five or seven countries in a. In, actually, no, I did seven countries in ten days. I did a Baltic cruise one time, so you can definitely see a lot of countries that way, and that way you get a little flavor of it, and then you can go back and spend a lot longer time in the, in the places that you really liked. Great idea. Yeah, that is good advice. We love cruises and Bill and I, we've, you know, we take at least one every other year together with the families. But I like the idea of the one where you hit a few different countries because right now I think the only thing stopping us really is the baby on the way. But once we kind of figure that out, um, why not just, you know, hop to a few different countries? Any, any suggestions about a country like Belize that would be a good starter one for, uh, for uh, Americans? Uh- well, Costa Rica. If you want to go to, if you want to go to Asia, Singapore is really easy for Americans. Although it's, it's halfway around the world, but everyone speaks English. It's one of the safest places in the world. The food is really good. Uh, Thailand. Um, you know, again, people are friendly. Most people speak English, except the taxi drivers. Food is so oh, cheap. Just like here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, obviously, Europe. England's really easy. Australia is easy, except it's a long haul. Um, and, you know, in the South Pacific, you know, Fiji is one of the friendliest places in the world, and they love kids. So check them out. Yeah, great advice, Bill. I I can't wait. I till we start booking these Costa Rica. Flights. I'd go to Costa Rica. Yeah, we'll, we're going to have to check it out. Well, Johnny, this was uh, this was great, and uh, you know you're our first travel guest to the podcast uh, this season uh, since we've mentioned to our listeners that we are we're full well full full blown. We're, yeah, we can't it's a little wait. different for us, you know. Yeah. It's, it's uh, and and make sure you listeners you you, you check out johnnyjet.com and uh, and get the newsletter because uh, yep. some Please. cool stuff on there. Yeah, and again, yeah. check them out on uh, you know the Instagram pictures are amazing. It makes me want to go everywhere you're at, and and you're on Twitter. Anywhere else, people should uh, look for you and, and and all the different deals. Uh, I'm on Pinterest. I'm on Periscope. I'm on Facebook. I'm on you name it. <laughs> that, that's 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 perfect. Well, Johnny, this has been incredible, and as always, guys, make sure to check out his website and ours and ours too. And uh, Johnny, thanks for doing the show. Thank you very much. All right, you guys, to take take care. Johnny Jet, Bill. That was cool. Yeah, you got to check him out on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> do you have Pinterest? Um, I think you do. I think I does. I, does everyone? Like, I think there was a point where you just sign up for Every, it. Yeah. Yep. Am I an active Pinterest uh, user? follower or user or poster? No. 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 Uh, well, you were asking about that travel <laughs> car seat. I uh, I'm Pinterest. wondering how you. Uh, you going to get me a little dad gift for the holidays? Oh, I just figured uh, I'd ask the question. You know, my, my brother uh, just went to Florida a few weeks ago, and they were trying to uh, get, you know, they're getting into the, the oh, how do we do this, you know, with a baby. Yep, with a baby, yeah. With a baby and, and car seat and everything. So um, I guess I could probably ask him how he did it, but... Yeah, you know, it was a question going into their trip, so I figured, why not? Well, I have to check out the one he recommended, and uh, actually, I, he reminded me of one thing, listeners. If you uh, if you could do us a favor, if you are going to do some holiday shopping, buy Richard Carsey <laughs> for Chicago. Uh, well, don't 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 do that. Only because uh, my wife might get a little upset. We, <laughs> we're like in baby overload after the. Uh, after the shower. But if you are going to do any holiday shopping, our Amazon link is uh, still available through our website. So it helps more than you know. So do us a favor and just oh, go yeah. on to the website, click our Amazon link. It's like a little portal. It takes you to Amazon. It's free for you and it helps us out so much. So all Amazon does is basically add up all the money that you guys spend by going to our website first and then give us a percentage of it. Yeah. And it yeah. doesn't cost you anything. No. Zero. No, that'd be great. A uh, big help around the holidays. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, speaking of, uh, Speaking of the holidays, I'm looking ahead already, Bill. I'm looking forward to that Chicago trip, but I think, of course, I got to start looking into some international travel now too. Yeah, I yeah. Know. You got I anything? Agree. Anything coming to mind now? Uh, 
Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Okay. I just like Southwest, and I have, you know, like we talked a little bit off the air, um, I have the cards, and we have the points, and we have the uh, companion pass. It's going to be, yeah. Uh, so It's like a buy one, get one. Do you need a yeah. passport for Costa Rica? You definitely do. Okay. It's a uh, yeah, different, you're, you different, you different country. Passport? I do. <laughs> okay. I do. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> you know, the next thing on my list is going to be to find a travel credit card that gives us access to those airport lounges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, have you ever been in one? Not legally. <laughs> what do you mean you snuck in? <laughs> I think I snuck in and I might have been underage. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, you know, af- on our last cruise, I actually had uh, uh, access to one. We had to buy a pass. It was just, we had like a three, four hour, not a layover, just, you know, we got off the cruise ship, you know, we went straight to the airport. And it was really nice. I tell you, it was, I think it was in Tampa, but compared to a regular layover, the, the drinks were free, the food was free, mm-hmm. they had recliners, we were charging all everything up and looking at all our pictures. I think so there's... you just need a card for that? Yeah, so some of these travel credit cards give you free access to these lounges. So if I'm, but even though I'm not flying that, like, is it a Delta lounge or something? Is that how it works? Um, I think the one we went to was a Delta one, yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, I think, for example, in Baltimore, there's only one and you just have to have a pass. And uh, I know Southwest, one of their major hubs is Baltimore, so That's maybe true. you look into it too. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there was a shower in the lounge. I didn't Are use it. Are you serious? Yeah, I didn't use it. But I wouldn't use it either. <laughs> no, the lounge is really nice. It's like a hotel. But if you were you know, coming from somewhere and you had a little stop, you could get something to eat and drink and rest and charge up and huh. I guess even shower. Yeah. It's, it's a whole other world out there, man. That's uh, amazing. VIP travel. So... You know, to our guest, Johnny Jett, thanks so much for all the tips. It's pretty interesting hearing his story, Bill. Oh, I should have. I wanted to ask him about that uh, airline. You know the airline? The, no. the, the nice one on TV where she's like taking a shower and sleeping. Jennifer Aniston did the commercials. And no. there's a bar in the middle. Oh, Emirates. Oh, Emirates, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we took that to... You took that? Yeah, we took that to Europe. It was really nice. Is there a bar in the middle of the plane? <laughs> Not in our like, you know, regular seats, but oh, I'll tell man. you what, it looks like there was a whole upstairs, like I said, a whole nother world, a VIP. A whole nother world. Yeah, so, well, Johnny Jett, thanks so much, and guys, go check out his website and sign up for the newsletter. I, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely do that, Bill, so we can get some of these travel deals. All right, guys, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast and check out our website, guystellingstories.com. There you, you can find merch and the Amazon link and all the other podcasts from before. So, And as always, I'm Rich Douglas. I'm Bill Easton. Until next time. <laughs>